The Yamaha V9958 is a poor design. Now, I think that in that sentence alone, I have angered the MSX fans and the Einstein 256 fans and the Genevi 9640 <laughs> fans and the entire MTX++ design team in my audience. So don't get me wrong, the V9958 is a great chip. If you don't look into it, it has a decent palette, a 16 out of 512 is the same as the Atari ST, it has high res graphics, 512 by 424 at 16 colors maximum, it uses chunky pixels, which in my opinion is just a brilliant idea. Considering how much the decision to use a planner design has haunted the Amiga into the 90s, but on top of that, Yamaha also added a blitter called the command engine to the V9938 and V9958, making the MSX the only 8-bit home computer with a hardware bit bullet function. The YJK mode on the V9958 has almost 5 times as much colors simultaneously on screen as the hand mode of the Amiga. And for our retro gaming enthusiasts, it runs great games. We got SD Snatcher, Metal Gear, Vampire Killer, and, as the cherry on top, the V9958 is one of the few video chips you can still buy as new old stock in 2024. That is not only great news for repairing old computers, but also making new ones like the Omega project. The V9958 is an impressive chip, if you look really, really deep into it. Now, if you are someone who casually hold up the timing section of data sheets for chips side by side for entertainment like me, you'll find that the V9958 seem to be designed to work with 150 nanosecond DRAMs. And this makes the high res and the high color mode on the V9958 almost a mission impossible. Because if you do the calculations, you'll find out that Normally, this leaves absolutely no time for CPU to access VRAM during active display. In order to overcome that problem, engineers at Yamaha decide to use memory interlacing to create graphics 6 and graphics 7. If we zoom into this section of the V938 timing diagram, you'll find out the cast 0 and 1 lines are actually alternating rapidly. Now, most of you might be wondering, like, what am I looking at? But just trust me, I have designed a system that works with DRAM, and I had this idea before, but I never dared to try and implement it. And when I saw this timing diagram, I was like, hats off for whoever managed to design a chip with such a tight timing requirements. And by the way, this is why mode G6 and G7 are not available if you only have 64k of VRAM, despite technically there is enough VRAM to support those modes. Overall, the V9958 is a gift to the retro gaming community and an engineering marvel in terms of hardware design. But if you approach the V9958 from a casual programmer or game developer's perspective, then the horror begins. Hi, I'm Andy, and this is my personal rant on the Yamaha V9958. Now, before we start, I want to make a few comments for the programming veterans out there. First, I talk about the video modes from a hardware perspective, so I will be referring to the modes as like G1, G2, G3, Graphics 1, Graphics 3, but I know some people are more familiar with the basic modes like Screen 1, Screen 2, Screen 4, so it might be useful to remember this form. Second is that in this video I mainly use the MSX as an example because that's the most famous system that the V9938 and V9958 are used. But most of what I say apply to all systems with the V9958. Also, because I'm familiar with all sorts of retro computers, I sometimes call the command engine a blitter, since it's essentially what it does. With that out of the way, let's talk about the problems with the V9958. As we are all here, 
I think we should all agree with the statement that limitation breeds creativity. This might as well be the model for the entire retro programming community. Therefore, I'm not going to sit around here and talk about that the V958 outputs blocky graphics, or it does only 2D, or it doesn't do 4K ray tracing with AI frame gen. Instead, I'm going to talk about the issue with V958 speed. The V958 is slow, even for its time. We all heard the tale that Hideo Kojima made Metal Gear for the MSX2 as a stealth game instead of an action game because he figured that he couldn't get a lot of actions on screen. And second, the V958 is one of the few graphics chips of its time that doesn't have a proper tile mode. And third, is the V958's registers are kind of a mess. Now, if you don't understand what's on the screen here, don't worry, I'll break down each of them one by one. Starting with speed, or the lack of speed. At the first glance, it doesn't look too bad. The V938 and V958 runs on 21 MHz clock, which is one of the highest clock frequencies you will find on any 8-bit systems. But things start breaking down when you start asking, how many cycles does it take to perform a certain action and get answers like this? I mean, the cycle counts for the VDP operations are just insane. And I would actually suggest that it's more reasonable to consider VDP a 2.7 MHz chip, which brings down the cycle count. But remember that 2.7 MHz is only three quarters of the CPU speed. And it doesn't stop there. If the blader is slow, it won't be such a big problem if we have a fast CPU. Because it's a nice bonus, right? Other 8-bit systems doesn't have a blader at all. And the good news is, the CPU that's used on the MSX isn't particularly slow. It runs at 3.58 MHz. However, the VRAM accesses are. Again, if you look at the timing diagram, you'll find that only these slots are allocated for the CPU and is shared with the command engine, which is the blitter. And that's when no sprites are shown. If sprites are enabled, half of the cycles will be taken fetch sprite data from the VRAM. Well, you might say, let's just disable the sprites. But remember, the CPU can't use both slots, even if sprites are disabled, because the CPU can't issue writes that fast. And the blader can't use both slots either because of the aforementioned cycle to set up the data for those recent writes. And on top of that, if we zoom out a little bit, we'll actually see that some cycles are used for VRAM refreshing, and those cycles are accessible by neither the CPU nor the VDP. And all above culminated in those 8 microsecond gaps between consecutive accesses in the VDP datasheet. But how slow is that? Well, we can calculate. One second is 1 million microsecond, and we divide that by 8, we get 125,000 bytes, which is 125k. The amount of conventional VRAM is 128k on the V9958, so the rule of thumb is we can change the entire VRAM in one second. Now remember that one frame is 1 60th of a second, or 1 50th if you are in the PAL region, and one graphics full screen is around 24 KB bytes, about one fifth of our VRAM. That means we need 12 frames of time to update one frame of data, aka 5 FPS. And that timing is assuming that the CPU can use 100% of time to transfer a prepared bitmap in the memory to the VRAM. They won't have time to prepare those data in the first place. So here's when I take a little break from the video and tell you about the Chinese phrase, Ji Lei, which literally translates to chicken ribs. It means that something that's basically useless but not completely useless, so it's kind of waste to just throw it away. Now, if you want the full story behind that, here's a word war for you. But the main takeaway here is that the command engine on the V9958 can be best summarized as chicken ribs. They are quite slow, but you cannot just throw them away and use the CPU. Well, you might say, 
we all know that 8-bit CPUs aren't really known for moving data around really fast. But games like Super Mario Bros. and Contra, they created vibrant and dynamic graphics and action-filled gameplay by using a tile engine. Sure, the MSX can do it, right? Oh, the V9 58 doesn't have tiles. Now, on the topic of tiles, the story is much simpler. It just doesn't have tiles. Well, technically it does, but if you compare the tile modes on the VDP against something like Contra side by side, you'll soon realize a tile mode that had its roots back in 1979 is also chicken rip. Now, I understand that some people just doesn't want tile on the MSX, right? Because it has basically became an identity of the MSX. It's like, why you console people are playing those jigsaw puzzles with tiles? We cool kids with MSX is already using the next generation, hardware accelerated bitmap graphics. But, and I hate to break this to you, there is only one Metal Gear, and there is only one SD Snatcher. Well, technically there is Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, but my point is, there's only so much you can pull from the well of top-down style low-action RPG games. And if you look at the MSX game library, it's full of top-down style low-action RPG games, ranging from classics to latest homebrews. Now, to be fair, there are other types of games on the MSX. For example, Psycho World has one of the most impressive intro screens of the entire MSX game library, which led to this, a painful demonstration of how mediocre looking a platformer on the MSX could look like. And Psycho World is generally considered a good game on the MSX. Well, Vampire Killer had more variety, but it only scrolls from room to room and doesn't do smooth scrolling. In fact, if it's not for Space Mambo and Aleste, I would say that the VDB can't do good shooter games. And let's not forget the elephant in the room, Pleasure Hearts, aka the single most graphically impressive shooter game on the entire platform. But if you pause the game and look at what mode it actually runs on, you'll find out that it actually runs on screen 4, which is essentially a TMS 9918 video mode with better sprites. Now this is basically the equivalent of booting up your latest Cyberpunk with RT Overdrive and finding out it runs on DirectX 10. Impressive? Yeah, but I would also say that's an indication that Microsoft is doing something wrong with later versions of DirectX. Actually, it is my belief that limitation breeds creativity when a programmer uses their tools in a clever way to avoid the shortages of those tools and make something fun. But not when the programmer has to fight those shortages with every trick available to them to implement a basic feature. What that creates is impression or what I would call impressiveness, which is enjoyed and appreciated by those who understand the hardware limitations. AKA the how is this possible feeling you get when you see a new demo. Creativity is enjoyed by all people regardless knowledge about the platform or the tools. And as we are on the topic of fighting with hardware, let's talk about registers. Hi, editing Andy here. Although I've written the script for the video and made a PPT for it to be one single part, it became clear to me that it would blow the time budget I set for the video. So I decided to split it into two. In the second part, we will talk about registers. But before that, I want to talk about an interesting discovery while browsing the YouTube backend of my previous videos. I found out that YouTube is actually very bad at suggesting my videos. It just put my videos next to random programming or general science videos. So if you don't want to miss out contents like this, please subscribe to the channel. And in the meanwhile, please leave your ideas in the comment section below. Do you love the V9N58? Do you hate it? Have you programmed on the MSX? Have you played games for it? Leave your idea, leave your idea and I'll do my best to reply to them. But for now, 
That's it for this video, and I will see you in part two. Bye.